Hello, my name is Michael Smith, and today we're going to make a cracked paint texture that's seamless and procedural in Blender 3. I'm using Blender 3.1.2. This should work in the 2 series as well, so uh, without further ado, let's get started. To get started, we're going to go ahead and select the general type of file. We're going to go to the shading tab, which is the only one I'll be using today. We're going to, on the top left corner of both of these windows, drag them to the left because I'm not going to be using those other windows. I'm going to slide this up so we have a bit more screen real estate. I'm going to select the cube, press period on the numpad so we zoom in on it, and then I'm going to change to cycles. Over here in the render properties, I'm going to change the render engine to cycles. I'm going to change the device to GPU compute. If you can't go to GPU compute or your cycles is slow and you want to use EV, this will work in there as well. I just happen to like this better. Having done that, I'm now going to go to the top right corner for viewport shading so we can see the object uh, shaded as it will be. And then we'll actually go ahead and add the texture. The first thing we're going to do is, if you zoom in on this with your middle mouse button, you can see it's very flat, which is not actually what paint looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to give it a little bit of texture so that it looks more like paint that's been rolled on. The way we're going to do that is go to Add, uh, Input, Texture, co oops, sorry, Add, Input, Texture Coordinates, and then we're going to do Add, Texture, Musgrave. I'm going to use the generated coordinates. You can use other coordinate systems if you want to know which one to use and why. Look at my tutorial on that topic. For this tutorial, we're going to use generated. We're going to take that height output and put it in the base color. One thing that Musgrave does that this hides is it actually puts out a number between negative and positive numbers, not just positive numbers. In Blender, when you feed it a negative number as a color, it just maps it to black. So what you're actually seeing are a bunch of negative numbers here, not flat spaces. If we were to treat this as a height map with zero as no height and one as as uh, the top level. So I actually like that. I want there to be a bit of a gap in between. So I'm going to do add converter map range. And I'm going to map uh, not from zero, but maybe from minus 0.2. So we have these islands where we have no height map at all. And then we ramp up to uh, something else here. Now what I'm going to do is use this as a bump map. So we're not going to deform the actual material. We're just going to change the way the light reflects off the material so it looks like it's deformed. And we're going to do that with add vector bump. We're going to take the height out of this map range. We're going to plug it into height here. We're going to take the normal out of bump. We're going to plug it into the normal of the shader. And I'm going to remove this height from the color. So there we go. Uh, two things about this. These are way too big and way too strong. So let's make them smaller. First, we're going to scale this up to something that looks more like what I'm seeing on my wall here. And then that's still a bit extreme, at least for how mine is textured. And so we're going to roll this strength back to something fairly light and maybe scale this up a bit more. OK, great. So now we have our basic rolled on paint texture and now we can add cracks to it. So now what we're going to do is cause this paint to flake off. The way we're going to do that is we're going to model the paint flakes as Voronoi uh, cells. So what that's going to look like is add, whoops, add texture, Voronoi texture. We're going to take the same generated coordinate system and put it in. And then I'll show you quickly what Voronoi is doing here. So if we put this distance out, and we move randomness to zero. What this is doing is creating a set of three-dimensional cubes, and then distance is the distance from the center of those cubes towards the outside. As you increase the randomness, it deforms those cubes, and you get these nice cells. So what I want to do is model each of these as a paint chip, where the center of this chip is adhered and undamaged. And as we go towards the edges, it lifts up and away from the underlying material. To do that, I actually want to measure from the outside where the edge of the chip is, uh, how far we are from there, not how far we are from the center. And the way I'm going to do that is go here and instead of F1, select distance to edge, which is the distance uh, to the edge for F1. So if we turn that on, it's not the inverse. Um, what it's doing now is measuring from this edge where it's zero backwards away. Um, so where previously was zero in the middle and then going away to the edges. So for instance, this edge would be farther away than that edge. Here it's measuring from the edge and going around, going inwards towards the center. So now what I want to do is model this so that we have the, the height map going from flat in the center to lipping up at the edges, cracking away. So there's two, a couple things I need to do there. I'm going to go to add, color, invert. What that's going to do is swap things so that the lowest point is in the center and the highest point is at the edge. Now that I'm here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and map this to a bump map so we see it as the bump map. So to do that, add vector bump. This is the height. We're going to remove it from the color. And then we take this normal and make it the underlying normal for the second bump. 
to combine the two. So here you can see that uh, there's a low point at the center and it ramps up towards the edge. The second thing we want to do is make this ramp up not linear. Right now this is just the distance from the edge, so it's just a straight line from the top to the bottom. That's kind of gross, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add converter float curve and we're going to flatten it out a bit at the top and the bottom and make it more of a curve instead of straight. And let me exaggerate that slightly. Okay, great. The second thing is we don't want the lip to go all the way from the middle to the outside. We want it to be peeling up at the edges. There are a bunch of ways to do that. You could use a color ramp. I find that if I do add converter math and use power, um, where we're taking it to an exponent, that works best. So just to remind you of your, your math, if if you have the value 1 at the very top of this, this mapping, then 1 to any power is always going to be 1. 0 to any power is 0, and in the middle, things that are closer to 0 are going to go quickly towards 0 relative to things that are farther away from 0. So as we ramp up this exponent, it's going to move our curve. Oh, I accidentally clicked invert here. There we go. Uh, that makes it so 1 is 0 and 0 is 1. We don't want that. And basically make it just so that this is now out towards the edges. And then we're going to reduce the strength. Uh, that's way too high. To something more like that. So we're looking a bit more paint chip-like, but not really. Uh, in the next section, what we're going to do is randomize this pattern a bit so these lines aren't so straight. And then we'll make them crack and chip off after that. So in order to make this less regular, we're going to use a trick of adding random noise to the coordinate system going into the texture. I have a video on this as well, I'll link in the bottom, but quickly what we're going to do is take a add texture noise texture, we're going to put in the same coordinate system, and then what we're going to do is do add converter uh, math, uh, sorry, vector math, we're going to offset these values by minus 0.5. So this, instead of going from range 0 to 1, goes minus 0.5 to positive 0.5. Plug in the color. And then we're going to do add converter, sorry, add color, mix RGB. Move all this stuff over a bit. And we're going to change this to add. And then we're going to mix in this value. So basically, we're going to add an offset between minus 0.5 and positive 0.5 to any point in this coordinate system to make it less regular. This is a bit much, as you can see. Like, that just looks crazy. We can now use this factor to reduce how much of that we're mixing in. And we can fiddle with these settings. So the, the large scale distortions are this scale. Maybe we make that a bit lower. And then the small scale distortions and how dramatic they are is this roughness and detail. So we're going to add... A little bit of detail, we'll fiddle with this again later. A little bit of roughness, and maybe increase the factor a little bit, and we'll call that a day. Okay, so now we have uh, random cracks that are no longer quite as straight, but this still doesn't look like peeling paint, because we need these paints to break apart, these cracks, sorry, to break apart and expose the underlying material, which is what we'll do next. So now what we need to do is have these cracks split apart and expose the underlying material. The way we're going to do that is at the edge of these, let me just break this apart a bit, at the edge of these Voronoi cells, we're going to define a value where when you get closer to the edge than that value, we suddenly drop off to zero and expose the underlying material. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to do add converter math, and we're going to do greater than. So greater than is going to be one when the value is greater than a given value, and zero when the value is less than a certain value. So we're going to say any value then greater than 0 0.050 is going to be true. Anything less is going to be false or zero. And the way we're going to use that is we're going to multiply that back into this height that we're putting out to make it zero when we're close to the edge. So let's do that. Add converter math here change that to multiply, put this output in there, and now what you can see is everywhere along the edge we have this lip that ends before the actual edge of the Voronoi cell. I'm also going to take this value and put it in the color to show you where the exposed material is, and I'm also going to use it, you can just see here that the same bumps I'm applying to the paint are now applying to the underlying material. I'm going to do the same multiply by the mask here to the height map for that other underlying paint texture and multiply that in so that the, the places where we don't have paint are completely flat. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, no matter what this value is, let's say I made it 0.1, I want the lip of the paint that's peeling off to go to the edge. And you can see now, when I make this bigger, we no longer have a lip. And that's because it's still doing the height map as though the edge is in the center here. So what I need to do, we're 
going to back this off to a much smaller value. What I need to do is, is deal with that problem. So I'm going to do add input value, and let's go back to 0 0.05. And I'll plug that in. And now what I want to do is for this output value of the Voronoi texture, instead of it going from 0 to 1 from the center all the way to the edge, I want to go from 0 to 1 from the center to where this boundary that we've just defined is. And the way I'm going to do that is add converter map range. And remember, coming out of here, this is distance to edge, so 0 is where we are at the edge. So I'm going to take the same value, and instead of mapping from 0 to 1 onto 0 to 1, I'm going to map from wherever that offset is to, to 1, from 0 to 1. And so now that lip is going to come up to where this offset at edge is. So if I change this again to 0.1, now we still have the edge. It's just moved inwards. Okay, so the next step we need to do uh, is these edges should not be the same width everywhere. This doesn't make much sense. This is as, low, as though the whole thing is uh, split up on every chip with exactly the same border. That's not realistic either. We want places where there's no border at all, where the, the paint's connected, and places where the paint is peeling off. So I'm going to do that next. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use another noise texture, add texture, noise texture, and we're going to use that to drive this width instead of using a constant. So we're going to put in the generated coordinate system, and instead of using this, I'm going to use shift right click to get a single point here, and I'm going to replace that point that we were putting in with this output. Now this by default is not going to work very well. Remember the value that was giving us sort of a small edge was 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, and this is going all the way from 0 to 1. Uh, and so most of these, we basically remove the entire paint chip and leave a tiny little bit. So we're going to deal with that by adding converter color ramp. And what we're going to do is where the distance to the edge is 0, right, black, that means that there's no distance at all. And where the distance to the edge is white, the, basically the whole chip is, has been removed. We're removing the whole thing. And so we're going to adjust these so we get better uh, chipping of the paint. I don't want this where, where things are chipping in splotchy amounts everywhere. We really want, I think I'm going to change the scale smaller, so that some parts of the material are chipping off and other parts are reasonably intact. And then we can fiddle with these values. The other thing I'm going to do is go from linear to ease, so that as we get out of these areas where we're completely chipped off paint, we still have a bit of paint splitting going off the edges of it uh, around the edge. Okay, so that's how we're going to add some random uh, paint chipping off with the Voronoi texture. Now what we want to do is it doesn't really make sense for these cracks to exist all throughout the material. We want the cracks to extend a bit beyond where the actual paint is splitting, but then it should be flat and adhere to the surface where it's not. And right now that's not happening. So what we're going to do is use this same texture. So we can take the output of the same texture. Where this texture is zero, that's where the distance uh, between the, the edges of these cracks is zero and they're right next to each other, that's where we want it to be relatively flat. Where the texture is one, that's where there's a big hole and we want to have this lip coming up at the edge of our, our paint flex. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this same value, we're going to do add converter math. And again, this height map for those chips, we're just going to plug it in there, do multiply instead, and we're going to multiply this gradient into that. Um, that does nothing by itself uh, because we need to use a color ramp to make it more extreme. So we're going to add converter color ramp. And now we can play with these values. So uh, as I ramp up this guy, this is where we, this is going to make things uh, stronger. Uh, sorry, this is going to make things weaker as we go farther away from the holes. And as I move this down, that's going to make the lip stronger closer to the holes. And I can fiddle with these two values, and so what we get is instead of getting cracks everywhere, we get cracks near where the holes are, and then we go to flat. I'm also again going to use ease so that things extend a bit farther, and I'm going to fiddle with this value a bit. And of course, you know, as you apply this to some surface, you can play with it to get what you want. And then I'm going to go back over here to the Voronoi and maybe make the chips... Oh, sorry, that's the noise. Maybe make the chips a bit smaller. And then we can play also with the strength of the bump map for how much we want that lip to show up. And there you go. You get this uh, crackling texture uh, where you can play with exactly how crackling it is and how far those cracks go away from the edges. And it lifts up and exposes the underlying material where the paint's been removed. And away from those damaged sections, you get flat paint. 
And that's basically it. That's procedural chipping paint. I'm going to play around with the settings a bit and put this on something more interesting and share that with you. Uh, and all the files that I use to do this, I'll put in links below so you can follow along there. And if you were confused about coordinate systems or the various types of built-in textures, I have a whole series on procedural uh, basics for materials that go over all those things. And I'll link to the relevant ones in the description for that as well. Uh, and that's it. Hope you learned something. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm putting it on a monkey head because it always looks cooler on a monkey head. I'm adding environmental lighting instead of just the default single light, so that looks better. I'm fiddling around with the settings a bit, you know, to make it look nice on the head. And then I, instead of having a map where it's black for the, the no paint and white for the paint, I'm actually having two separate shaders and using that mask for a mixed shader and then putting a cement style shader underneath the paint so that it looks a bit cooler. And that's it.